most talked about nutrient when it comes to raising corn is nitrogen. But how much nitrogen do we really need to apply? Well, that is the trick, and so today we want to talk just a little bit about what's in your soil, what's going to be in your soil, and how much you should apply and when. Okay, first of all, what is out there in your soil? If you raised soybeans, for example, last year, and you're going to raise corn this year in a field, how much nitrogen is left in the field after that soybean crop? Well, there's only one way to find out. That's getting out and taking a soil sample and looking for the nitrogen content in that soil. Now, if you said, well, hold on, I just raised soybeans, there should be a nitrogen credit following soybeans. Let me tell you right now, there is no such thing as a nitrogen credit following soybeans. What's happened over the years is that there's been kind of a general rule of thumb that people have said, well, soybeans are about 40 bushels on average across the country. There's roughly a pound of nitrogen left for every one bushel of soybeans. So you should just figure 40 pounds of nitrogen are out there in your field. Why would you do that when you could actually measure it with a $5 soil test. If you go and pull a soil test for nitrate nitrogen, you can see what's out there. And then you'll know exactly. Maybe there's 100 pounds left from last year's crop, and maybe there's less than 10 pounds. You really need to know, because that could be a big difference for your corn crop this year. Well, I think one of the reasons why people talk about a nitrogen credit for soybeans is it's actually the other way around. There's no nitrogen credit for soybeans. No such thing exists. But what I'm getting at here is if you're corn on corn, there's a lot of high carbon residue and bacteria are going to tie up that nitrogen, at least in the short term. So you're going to need more nitrogen if you're in a continuous corn type situation or just there's a high carbon residue out there, whether it was wheat straw or something else. So a lot of times you have to figure an extra 50 pounds or more above and beyond what we're going to talk about today, just as kind of a standard nitrogen recommendation if you're in that situation. All right, let me get back to the soil test because there's one other thing you should really pay attention to on the soil test. It's the organic matter in your soil. Let's just say, for example, you have 4% organic matter in your soil. Well, with 4% organic matter, there is going to be some mineralization that happens throughout the year. That's a breakdown of some of that organic matter that releases some nutrients in your soil. Well, how much? It's hard to tell. It depends on how much heat and moisture and, and how long your growing season is. Uh, a lot of factors go into that. But for a general rule of thumb in the upper Midwest, we use the number of 20 to 30 pounds of nitrogen will come available from each 1% of organic matter. So if you have 4% organic matter in your soil, take that times the 20 to 30 pounds of nitrogen, that's 80 to 120 pounds of nitrogen that could come available in your soil this summer. Well, that said, if let's say you're in Canada, a really cold environment, or you have other soil factors that are against you like poor drainage, it might only be 10 pounds. But the point is your soil will release some nitrogen for free every year. You've got to calculate that in. The other thing is Darren mentioned on the soil test, look at soil organic matter. Well, there is one other factor that you need to look at on the soil test. So now we're up to, hey, look for nitrate, look for organic matter, but also look for cation exchange capacity. That'll tell you roughly how much nitrogen your soil can hold at any one time. So for example, if you find an 8 CEC or cation exchange capacity of 8, multiply that times 10. So 8 times 10 is 80. Well, if you can only hold 80 pounds at any one time, and let's say you already have 30 out there, that means you should only apply about 50 pounds right now. And sure, if you're right at the time when the plant is going to be using a bunch of nitrogen, you can probably push that a little bit. Using nitrogen stabilizers allows you to push that a little bit. But the point is now you've got a number to shoot for that you don't want to overdo. And I think that's a really important thing because in the past, people have just looked at, well, I have light soil I can't put much on. I have heavy soil I can put a lot on. Well, how much is a little? How much is a lot? I mean, it, it, it's all a guess. So this gives you a much more exact number to target. Target. Well, the real number that you need to be targeting in your field is what's your estimated crop yield? Let's just say in this example that your estimated yield is 250 bushel corn. Well, how much nitrogen does 250 bushel corn need? According to numbers from the International Plant Nutrition Institute, which you can find on the Ag PhD Fertilizer Removal app, 250 bushel corn actually needs 280 pounds of nitrogen. Now that 280 pounds, that includes what the grain is going to remove, but also what your stover needs. And you have to keep in mind how much your plant is going to need just to produce all that plant growth that's going to hold that ear 
right until harvest and feed it all the way through. So you need to be able to get 280 pounds of nitrogen out of the soil to raise 250 bushel corn. Okay, so if you need 280, you have to subtract off what you started with, what's going to come available through organic matter mineralization, and then also if you have a high carbon residue problem, like let's say it's continuous corn, well then you're going to need some additional nitrogen above and beyond. But I mean, it's, it's really that simple. So take what you need, subtract off what you've got already, what you're going to have through organic matter, and pretty much there you go, unless you gotta factor a little bit more in for loss or something like that. So the more that you can fine tune this nitrogen thing, the more that you can split apply and get it applied relatively close to when the plant is going to need it, the more you can cut back on your overall nitrogen use. And don't get us wrong here, we're not saying, oh, every farmer is over applying in. We absolutely do not find that. Many farmers are under applying nitrogen. All we're trying to say is a lot of the old recommendations where it's just, okay, 200 bushel corn, I need 200 pounds. I had soybeans last year, subtract off 40 bushels uh, or 40 pounds, so I need 160, bam, that's it on every acre. No, that's not the case. And then in addition to all this, we talked about soil testing in the fall or in the spring, but also use a pre-side dress nitrate test or some other management program like Farmer's Edge or something like that to help you fine tune that nitrogen amount you need on a per acre basis late in the year. Well, getting your nitrogen rate just right is great for your profitability and also for the environment. You also won't leave any extra nitrogen out there to feed weeds like our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed?